Hi, Honest Discussioner here. Welcome to my post-debate analysis for Obama versus Romney round two. Now, a little bit of history. For the first debate, uh, the Romney versus Obama round one, I called it for Romney 70-30, and the polls showed it incredibly so. Uh, he went from being down by uh, almost six points to basically now a dead heat, uh, at least before the vice presidential election. Uh, actually, no, he was winning before the vice presidential election, and then the vice presidential election came along. I called it for Biden, 55 to 45, and I said by Monday there would be an uptick in the polls for Obama, and I was again correct. Two out of two, uh, it's now a dead heat. After this debate, I'm going to give it 60-40 to Obama. He didn't blow out Romney quite as much as Romney uh, blew him out in the first debate, but I think Obama was clearly the victor. I think the polls will show it, and I'm predicting that Obama will be leading in the polls on the real clear politics aggregate by Friday um, by 1%. I think he'll be leading by 1%, at the very least 0.8%. That is my official prediction, and we'll see if I can go three for three. Now, as for the actual debate itself, it was definitely the most engaging of the three debates. Uh, both performers seemed like they were, or both debaters seemed like they were at the top of their game, uh, and Obama actually seemed awake, I believe is the word I'm looking for. It was a lot of fun. Now, I think the reason Obama won is because instead of framing, he actually he used the similar tactic that Biden did. Obviously, this was pre-planned, but he went and said in the first three responses, the same as Biden did, what my opponent said is inaccurate. Biden went with malarkey. Obama went with what he what Governor Romney said is inaccurate. The first three responses that I saw, a little bit of streaming problems, but that's besides the point, so I may have missed a question or two. But overall, Obama challenged him on a lot of the misperceptions, the, the well, for lack of a better term, the lies that have come out about Obama from the Romney camp. Now, he didn't do this as well as he could have. There's a lot of BS that I caught Mitt Romney talking about, uh, such as the apology tour and the um, more people leaving the workforce being uh, meaning the unemployment rates at 10%, when I'm pretty sure when he's doing that, he's not taking into account people that are entering the workforce as well, which means he's specifically quote mining numbers. But again, uh, Obama did come out and point to a lot of inaccuracies in what Romney was saying. So I think he came out strong and aggressive, but polite, which is what Biden couldn't pull off quite as well. Biden had to interrupt a lot, and that really, I think, diminished his overall, the overall force of his argument, which is why Biden only won 55 to 45, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the polls. Uh, so that's the overall reason that Obama won. Uh, as there were a couple of really great moments for him, though, at the same time. Uh, Romney tried to have a moment with Libya. The president had come out and said, on day two, I was on the Rose Garden saying that this was an act of terror. Now, Romney didn't believe him. He tried to pin him to the wall and said, Mr. President, so you're trying to tell me you called this an act of terror. Obama's response was, proceed, Governor. So Romney went out and called Obama, well, a liar, pretty much. He didn't use that terminology. Uh, but Obama just kind of snarked from the background and said, read the transcript. And the beautiful moment came when the moderator chimed in and said, we have the transcript right here, and the president did call it an act of terror. And Romney was fumbling for the next 10 seconds, unsuccessfully trying to dig himself out of that hole. That was probably one of the worst moments in the debate for him. Now, at the same time, this wasn't a blowout as much as it was in the first debate for in Romney's favor, and I think the main thing that Romney had going for him was that he tried to frame the last four years as a failure, and he did it mostly successfully. Uh, not enough to make up for the strong points that Obama made, but enough that it really hampered Obama's overall rating. If Obama had answered that, then it would have been a blowout, and possibly even more than the first debate. But that's only speculation because we didn't see that in the actual debates. What Romney tried to do is try to say, you know, things aren't great. And Obama really didn't have anything to say over that other than a few comments here or there that didn't really address that fully. What he needs to talk about and what he needs to 
address more fully and in a more concise manner is the idea that the economy was decelerating because the people that we elected beforehand were not entirely but largely responsible for its deceleration for the economic collapse and while things aren't as good as they were at the moment of the collapse things have bottomed out because the time spent was not on trying to increase to everything back to the way it was it was to prevent things from getting worse which is what you have to do he bottomed out the economy so it stopped going downwards and now he's bringing it back up we see this in the unemployment rates we see this in a lot of different factors and that's something that he has not been able to effectively communicate and romney hit him over the head with this a number of times. Now, uh, the other factor in this debate was the moderator. Now, Jim Lear sucked. People disagree with me with that, that's fine, but he sucked. He let the uh, candidates completely walk over him in almost every instance, and for, the, for most of the time, it seemed like he wasn't even there. Now, in the second debate with the uh, vice presidents, uh, that woman killed it. She did awesome. In this debate, same thing. It was it was an interesting dichotomy because the uh, in this debate in the in the pre presidential debate round two, the moderator was uh, I believe her first name was Candy, uh, was a little bit more strict. I don't know. So I still think the vice presidential debate moderator did a little bit better because she was able to uh, work with the flow more. Uh, of, but the second moderator or the moderator for tonight stuck to the rules a little bit more and was more effective at telling the, opponent, the people to shut up. A little bit, she weakened the longer the debate went, but that's besides the point. I give her some major props for, you know, telling people when they need to shut up. Obama and Romney both, because both overstepped their bounds, although Romney did, did it a little bit further. He overleaped his bounds in a few cases. In both debates, he tried to dictate terms to the moderator. Uh, he both said, no, I think it's my turn to talk, even though you're saying it's not. And in both cases, even Jim Lear had to say, that's not how it works. So, again, Obama overstepped his bounds too, so let's not try to make this into a black and white issue. But still, Romney kind of was a bit rude here, and Obama was less so, let's say, uh, to, to be as fair as possible. Uh, finally, we uh, come to the issue of the 47%. What was missing in 98% of this debate, or 99% of this debate, was Romney's 47% comment. How Obama handled this was to say it in his closing statements, and he had his closing statements last. This was an interesting strategy, not necessarily one I endorse. Certainly one I don't endorse as a matter of morality, but even as a matter of strategy, I'm not sure if I endorse it. Um, now, the positives of this strategy is that Romney had no chance to respond to the 47% comment. The negatives is that it, he didn't, it didn't have quite as much force. He could have used that to bash Romney over the head throughout the debate. What I imagine went on behind the, behind the scenes in the uh, Obama campaign was them saying, look, he might have a way to twist this around. He might have a way to spin this and say that it's completely untrue or make a moment in which he becomes sympathetic uh, and repents his ways or something along those lines. So let's play it safe and make it so that he can't respond to that so we get our zinger in with zero risk. Morally, that's not really the best thing to do. If you're going to make such a major accusation, bring up such a major point in the debate, you need to give your opponent a chance to respond. But even from a strategic standpoint, I would have gone with, especially since he's down in the polls by a small margin, but he's still down by a down, period. I would have tried to use that and beat them over the head with it, just like Romney tried to do with the inaccurate assessment about the tax cuts to Medicare, which again didn't come up, and that's going to hurt Obama because I think that lost him Florida, or unless he fixes that, it's going to lose him Florida. Well, that's my assessment. I hope you have a nice day. Tell me what you think. Tell me if I'm uh, wrong, or uh, tell me if I'm biased uh, in my assessment of uh, calling it for Obama. People said I was biased about Biden, but my prediction was spot on. So to those people, individuals, in your face, have a nice day. Honest discussioner, out. Let's see if I can get three out of three.